everyone. My name is Maggie Justice and I'm a PhD student in the Department of Animal Sciences here at Auburn University. For our forage drop video today, we will be talking about tall fescue. Tall fescue is the primary cool season perennial forage of the Southeast. It is deep rooted, tolerant of low fertility and acidic soils and has a fall and spring growing season. It is also known to help with erosion control. Tall fescue has become popular because it is a durable forage and often can establish itself in hard growing areas. It is drought tolerant, often easy to establish, and is a good grazing forage because of its rapid regrowth. And unlike most other forages, it is tolerant to overgrazing. Tall fescue is also seen as an excellent forage for stockpiling. It grows well into the fall and when conditions are favorable, it can provide substantial amounts of stockpiled forage. It often remains green and productive during this time. So stockpile tall fescue maintains a high digestibility and palatability. This can really help to extend your grazing season. But what makes fescue different and so durable? Tall fescue is infected with a microscopic fungus that invades the plant's intercellular spaces. This is referred to as an endophyte. It is found in the stem, leaf sheaths, and seed of the plant. As you can see from our picture here on the right, the endophyte is embedded within the cell walls of the plant. This is a symbiotic relationship between the plant and the endophyte. The endophyte helps to defend the plant from things such as drought conditions and pest. It makes the fescue plant extremely hardy and durable. Unfortunately, this endophyte produces toxins known as ergot alkaloids. These ergot alkaloids are toxic to our grazing livestock and give a rise to a condition known as fescue toxicosis. Fescue toxicosis causes issues in our grazing livestock, such as vasoconstriction, an increase in body temperature, metabolic inefficiencies, and reduced serum prolactin. This causes a whole list of issues in our production animals, but some of the main, main consequences we see are reduced intake and gain, low birth weights, low milk production, and poor reproduction. Fescue toxicosis is thought to cost U.S. livestock producers around $1 billion each year. How can we manage this fescue toxicosis and still benefit from the durability of tall fescue? First and foremost, it is important to understand your fescue pasture. Do you have toxic tall fescue, endophyte-free tall fescue, or novel endophyte tall fescue? There are two methods in order to tell what you have present in your pasture, a chemical test and a microscopic test. Now you might be asking yourself, what is the difference between these three tall fescue types? Toxic tall fescue has the toxic endophyte present. This is what leads to issues with fescue toxicosis. As you can see from the picture on the right, the endophyte is present within the cell wall of the plant. Now, non-toxic or endophyte-free tall fescue, the endophyte has been removed from the tall fescue seed. As you can see from the picture on the right, the endophyte is not present at all within the cell wall of the plant. Unfortunately, this leads to reduced tolerance to drought, close grazing, and pest, leading this tall fescue to not be as durable as traditional toxic tall fescue. Novel endophyte tall fescue, the endophyte strain does not produce the toxic ergot alkaloids. As you can see from the picture on the right, there's an endophyte still present, but it is a different strain. So this leads to novel endophyte tall fescue being as hardy as traditional tall fescue, but we've seen an, an improvement in our grazing livestock performance. If it is found that you do have traditional toxic tall fescue pastures, there are some steps you can take in order to help mitigate the issues we see 
with fescue toxicosis. First and foremost, you can have a complete renovation of your pasture. This is, would be the replacement of your toxic tall fescue with a novel endophyte tall fescue. Now we say novel endophyte over the endophyte free because of the hardiness we still see in the novel endophyte but with the added bonus of not having fescue toxicosis issues. If a complete replacement of your toxic tall fescue pastures is not possible or feasible, there are some management strategies we can take in order to help mitigate with toxic tall fescue pastures. There are several management strategies you can utilize when grazing traditional toxic tall fescue pastures. Pasture rotation and other strategic grazing plans can help dilute your grazing livestock. Seeding legumes such as alfalfa and clovers into the pasture can also help to dilute the toxic fescue and improve animal performance. The mowing of seed heads in the spring will reduce the toxic seed intake by your livestock. And supplemental feeding with other forage hays and grains has also shown to be beneficial to our livestock when they are consuming toxic tall fescue. Remember, traditional tall fescue is an imperative to our forage systems here in the Southeast. Unfortunately, with traditional toxic tall fescue, we have major issues with fescue toxicosis and our grazing livestock. But there are several management strategies that we can take in order to offset the impact of fescue toxicosis. We can renovate our pastures to the newer novel endophyte tall fescue, where we will still see the benefits of the durable forage that we know, but we don't see the issues with fescue toxicosis in our grazing livestock. When renovation is not possible, there are also other management strategies that we can take in order to offset these issues. That's all we have time for today. Thank you for listening in and we'll see you next week.